So I'm going to show you how I have been cleaning up 3D scans in MeshMixer. Now I'm pretty new to MeshMixer, but it's been really quick to clean these files up. So the first thing we're going to do is find the STL that I want to open and clean. Uh, in this case, I'll be editing Lara's 3D scan. And I just open it in MeshMixer. Now this could take a while depending on the size of the file. Now that was a 334 meg STL, so it's going to be a pretty big one and it's going to take a little while to open. Okay, so now that MeshMixer has my file open, I can pan around with the right mouse button. And the first thing we're going to do is click the Edit button and hit Transform, and I'm going to scale this down. So I've been finding that a height of about 100 millimeters is a pretty good size for a 3D print of a little statuette of someone. So once you type that in, you want to make sure that you tab out of the box so that the change takes effect, and then go ahead and click Accept. And then the next thing we're going to do is do a line. And what this will do is just moves it down um, to the bottom of our work plane again and kind of recenters the, um, the mesh. So once I hit a line, then I hit accept. And I'm zoomed way out. So then I like to do view, recenter view. And that's going to zoom me back in. So now I'm going to start to cut away parts of the floor that I, I don't want my print. And actually, I don't want any of the floor really in my print. Um, so the easiest way that I found to do this is with a plane cut. So I click plane cut and naturally it's just going to uh, the top part here is the part that you're going to keep and the bottom part that's more uh, translucent is the part that it's going to cut away. Um, so you can you can manipulate this and um, change the angle of the plane cut and I found that to be really difficult to work with um, so I found an easier way it was actually just to click and drag and you can draw your own plane. And again, uh, the dark or the solid side is the side you're going to keep and the other side is the side you're going to get rid of. So I just do real rough cuts. And then I rotate the plane and then I'm going to do another plane cut and this time on the back side. And accept. Rotate again. Plane cut. And these can be pretty rough in the beginning. Um, they don't need to be too accurate. I'll show you how to clean up the rest of the mess in a minute. And then I'll do another one. And this should be the last one. Now, Laura has her arm out there, so I want to make sure that I don't cut that off. All right. And so you can see I've already cut down a, you know, a large portion of the floor. Um, the other thing I want to do is try and make it as level as possible. So with that, I can use the transform tool. Now, because the file is starting to get smaller, it's going to be a little bit easier to manipulate. So I need to tilt Laura back a little bit. And this uh, red uh, arch or arc uh, lets me do that. So I'm just going to kind of tilt her there. I'm going to rotate and make sure she's pretty straight from that angle. All right, and that looks good enough. So then I'm going to click Accept. And the next thing we're going to do is another plane cut. And this time I'm going to cut on the Z. Uh, but in Mesh Mixer, they call this the Y, um, which is really confusing and a pain in the butt. So I'm just going to try and get, I just want like the bottom of her feet. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click Accept. Okay, and now I want to clean up this space around her, um, what's left of the floor. And to do that, I'm going to use the Select tool. And I'm just going to click on Select, and then I'm going to start dragging and kind of encircling the area that I want to get rid of, and then hit X. Again, doesn't have to be super accurate. We're just kind of going for getting rid of all the rough edges. Okay, that looks pretty good. I, I'm pretty happy with uh, the way that Lara is looking. Now I need to add a pedestal for her to print on. Um, so I'm going to do mesh mix, and I'm going to find the cylinder in here, and I'm just going to click and drag it out. It's going to make it super huge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size 
And with the cylinder, I'm going to turn off uniform scaling. This way I can manipulate each one of the sides um, by itself. So I'm going to set the X to be 60. Set the Y, which again, remember this is the, the height or the Z um, in Mesh Mixer to be 4. And then I'm going to set the Z, which is what we typically think of as the Y, to be 60. And again, remember you need to click out of that box for that number to take effect. All right, so I've got all those 64, 60, and I'm going to hit accept. And you're probably going, well, where in the world is my uh, cylinder? And it the key is that it's zoomed out way, 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 way up here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit edit and do a line and then hit accept. And that's going to put it back in the center of my uh, closer to underneath of Lara. So now I'm also going to go ahead and align Lara. So I just click on her and click align. And this is going to put her pretty much in the center too. It's going to help me get her in the center of that, that pedestal. Um, and then I'm going to transform Lara and I'm going to move her up a little bit so that I can get more of her feet. Uh, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to try and get her in the center of that pedestal just as best as I can. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to click accept. Now I want to join Lara and the pedestal together so that they're one solid object. So I just click on the pedestal, click on Lara, and hold in the shift key while I do that. And that's going to select both of them. And then you'll see these new options come up. And the one you want to do is Boolean Union. And that's going to join both the pieces together. And then you can click Accept. And this now makes it one solid object. Um, and it this way, when they print, they'll print as one, one mesh. Um, I do want to show you one little caveat, um, so I'm going to undo that real quick. So I have had, in the past, sometimes when I click on both of these and I do the Boolean union, oh, perfect, the base disappears. And I'm not quite sure. I think it has to do with the order I'm clicking in. If that happens to you, just click the Boolean union that pops up here again, and it should bring it back, and then you can click Accept. Perfect. Now I'm going to export this as a new STL and I'm going to call it Lara Base. Okay, so I can find Lara in here. Oops. There she is. You can see that it's scaled down in size from 334 megs to 9.2 megs. And that's a that's a really good size STL. That'll print just fine. Um, if it's a little bit bigger, you might need to um, reduce some of the faces in MeshLab, and that's a whole other video. The last thing I like to do is repair the file just in case. So I open up my web browser, I go to cloud.netfab.com, go ahead and sign in here, and then all I need to do is upload Laura's file here. So I'm just going to drag and drop it. Once it uploads, NetFab will repair the file, make sure all the edges are manifold, and make it ready for printing. You don't necessarily have to do this step, but I find that it happens enough that a file needs to be repaired that it just makes sense just to do it real quick before I send it to the printer. All right, once our file is repaired, we can click Download. And once that's done downloading, it's ready to be sent to the printers.